Welcome back! This time we're looking at basic controls for a gearbox. So, here I have a nice little gearbox, which I've geared up because I put it around the wrong way. Oh well. But this will be the same for anything. So, got an input shaft doing 19 odd RPM, output shaft, and a wheel. Now remember, your output shaft has to be lined up for this to work because we're going to be using weld latches. I'll show you another method where you don't have to line anything up. There's hours and hours of fun to build. But all I've got here, some gears and a wheel at the back, keeping it at around 20 RPM, close to. Got two pit RPM counters there for the screens, and my chip for how to control this. That's right folks, we're doing E2. So, to start off with, head over to your wire. Uh, physical thingies, what is it? Yeah, physics. Weld constraint latch, and weld each gear to your output and shoot down the controller. Now, because I've got everything running, I'm going to get a hell of a lot of lag because everything's now going to bind up. So I'll just go around the back here and freeze you up. So you're not much of a problem. Okay. So now these three gears are welded to this wheel. So nothing can turn at the moment. So we're going to need a little E2. Get over your E2 tool. I'll probably stick this code off on the internet as well. Right, ignore this bit of code at the bottom, that means nothing to you yet, that's for later. In fact, I should shuffle that quickly out of the way. All you need is one line, one line for each argument. So, because I'm controlling this with numpad inputs of 1, 2 and 3, so there's only 3 gears, what you need to do is write Right, you need inputs of input 1, so I've just put I1, I2, I3, I've put a stop on, you don't need that. And the outputs of gear 1 and gear 2 and gear R, because I originally wrote this for a reverse box as well. But really, G1, G2 are gears. Anything that starts with a gear, G is a gear, anything that starts with an I is an input. So all I've written is, if I1 equal equal 1, and I2 equal equal 0, and I3 equal equal 0, then gear 1 equal 1. Gear 2 equal 0, gear 3 or gear R equals nothing. Then what you do is you move the 1 over to input 2, and write it again. And then I normally write a line for all zeros, and then for 1 for all 1s in case you mash the entire keyboard. And I'm a bit crap at writing code, I always write it in the old school lazy way. Which actually takes more work. So all this code will do is if I press input 1, gear 1 will activate, gear 2 and gear 3 will turn off. If I hit input 2, gear 1 and gear 3 turn off, gear 2 comes on. So all you need is like nice little lines of code. So, head over to the wire tool. Go... oh, wrong way around. Active. Okay, that's gear 1. That's gear 2, and that's gear 3, which is gear uh, I might rewrite that. I'll go unfreeze my power wheel here. The problem is, I didn't put a stop on, so if I set it to gear 1, which currently is, RPM out is about 60, get up gear 2, wait for everything to catch up, because it's gearing down, see? Gear 1 is these two. Gear 2 is these two. And gear 3 is a 1 to 1 relationship. So if I stick it in third, it should be 1 to 1. Close to. I didn't make this power wheel particularly powerful. So. They're about the same. If I go back to 2, speeds up. Go back to 1, 60 up here. You want to do it the other way around from that. You want to gear down, not up. That's one way of doing it. Let's go have another look at it another way. Just remove all this. Over here we have a no collide box. As you can see, there's no wheel on the end. Instead, the gears no collide on and off depending on. Ooh, hello. Depending on what gear is selected. So at the moment, gear 1 is selected. So all. This gear is no collide in that. This gear is no collide in that. This gear is no collide in that. So I give it a spin, hit two, we shift in second, hit three, shift in third, hit four, shift into fourth. Only difference with the code is you create a variable called latch. Hold on, I'll open up the two. 
Make a variable called latch, make it equal zero, then connect all the actives to the latch, because you don't want them welded, you want to use no collide, not the weld, but by default they're all welded on. Then all you do is the same if input one input two input one equals one, input two equals zero, input three equals zero, input four equals zero, then you want gear one to be nothing because you want them to collide. It works a bit backwards to the way I thought it would. If no collide if you put the no collide input on a well constrained latch to one, they will no collide. They won't hit each other. If you set it to zero, they will collide. You can build a gearbox a bit smaller like this, but I'm having problems getting this to duplicate. Again first. The only difference with this in terms of using it is you weld latch these to an engine and then you want a wheel out the back, say here. Just to ball socket all these two, then you ball socket all the vehicle wheels to that. So rather than having a wheel on the side, you have one at the back. You can ball socket all the wheels to each gear individually, but it's a bit neater not to. That's how to do a weld latch box and a no collide box. I rather like the no collide boxes, but I'm never going to do bloody things. As always, I'm Big Adam and I make crap tutorials. And the weather's nice today. And now I've got to go re-record re part two, because I have my mic off for it. Oh well.